This is Twit. So tell us about NeuroRacer, the game. You uh, you developed the game, you made it, but instead of putting it out there uh, to compete with Call of Duty 2, you decided to put it through FDA clinical trials. Yeah, so in 2008, like we were discussing, I had the idea for the game, and I was focused on older adults because that's what I had been researching. And so we did a three-year study, we being my laboratory at UCSF, and we found that we could improve older adults' ability not just to play the game, but also their attention and their working memory. We also recorded brain activity during gameplay to understand how the front part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, the most evolved part of our brain, has better engagement uh, after gameplay. And so in 2013, we published that data in in Nature uh, magazine, which is you know as, as good as it gets for us scientists, and it was the cover of the journal, so it was a super exciting point in my career. And everyone on the team, and there were many many people, including folks from Lucas Arts, from the game industry, who helped us build NeuroRacer. And so that was uh, a moment uh, in time of where do we go from here? For for a lot of research projects, having it published in Nature is the end, right? I mean, there is no higher moment of reward for a research study than a publication as the cover of Nature. But uh, I didn't want it to end as an academic exercise. I, that's not why NeuroRacer came into existence and this whole project was formed. I really did it to help people uh, directly in their lives. And there's so many scientific discoveries that reach this that phase where they are, you know, peer-reviewed publication, and then that's it. They just live on the academic shelves or online, in, in our case now, for forever, and never um, advance to uh, its potential of actually helping people. And so I was faced with this question, what what do we do at NeuroRacer? Do we just put it out there click to consume, um, like, like, consume, like consumer video games are currently uh, positioned, or do we do something different with it? And so the idea I had at that time was to see if we could take it to the next level as not just a, a approach to improve attention generally, but as an actual clinical therapeutic tool um, that could be used as a type of medicine. Uh, in order to do that, I realized that I could not take the game development to the next stage within our laboratory at UCSF. This is where it had to leave the lab and become associated with a company that could build it out as a product. NeuroRacer was really a prototype, it was never a product. And so um, I filed a patent, uh, which was my first foray into the world of intellectual property, to help uh, protect the idea, the methodology behind NeuroRacer. Now, the patent's not for a game. Uh, you can't really patent that. The patent's for the game engine, how we weave together adaptivity of the challenge on your performance in real time and as well as real time feedback across these multiple tasks. And so that patent is owned by my university. UCSF owns that patent. I am the inventor and I hope co-found a company in 2010 called Achille, A-K-I-L-I, Achille Interactive. And Achille is uh, now the licensor of that technology. So that's the three-way relationship across NeuroRacer's technology. And Achille has now um, put together an amazing game team, including folks from LucasArts that help build NeuroRacer and other you know, AAA video game professionals, as well as a healthcare team to try, yeah, I can see up on the screen, Matt Ormanek is uh, one of the creators of, um, of NeuroRacer, and he was at LucasArts at the time. And what we've done now is, uh, the team at Achilles, is we've built a way better video game than NeuroRacer from all the perspectives that you want a game to be engaging and fun for people. So higher levels of art, music, story, reward, um, better uh, usability using, you know, with an iPad. So you have the accelerometer and the tap screen as opposed to a, you know, really awkward joystick, which is what we use to NeuroRacer. And then using the cloud in a much more effective way uh, to have data analytics and server support. And what we've now decided, as opposed to just putting the game out there, we are now taking the game through the highest level of regulatory approvals to try to advance it as a clinical treatment for multiple different populations that have deficits in attention. So the list is long post-traumatic stress disorder, um, traumatic brain injury, early Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis, um, depression, and where we've advanced the farthest with our research is as a clinical treatment for children with ADHD. That's the, the furthest you've gone with ADHD? 
Yeah, the ADHD is the only research project that has now finished a phase three trial. So um, for those that are not familiar with the FDA passage of a device or a drug, uh, there are these stages, these phases of research that get larger and more complex as you prove that what you're doing is not dangerous and has some efficacy. A phase three is the large multi-site randomized double-blinded study that you do for any drug or device right before you submit to the FDA to get it approved. Approved. And uh, we completed one. It's the only research study of its kind that I'm aware of across 20 sites, um, 350 children with a diagnosis of ADHD, randomized, placebo controlled, um, to determine if playing EVA, which is the game that came from NeuroRacer, if it would improve their attention abilities. And in, at the very end of 2017, we reported positive effects on our primary outcome measure, showing that EVO in fact, is capable of improving attention on a diagnostic test, an FDA-approved test of ADHD in children that play that game for a month, um, five days a week for 30 minutes a day. So that's what the dosage was in the study, the dosage of, of the video game. And we are now positioning that to the FDA to have it approved as a clinical treatment, uh, just like stimulants are currently prescribed for ADHD, which would make it the first non-drug treatment for ADHD, uh, the first prescribable video game, and maybe even most exciting, uh, the first of a new category of medicine, what we think of as, as a digital medicine uh, to treat a condition of the brain. 